Today I'm talking to uh, Clive Jones, who's the general manager winemaker for Nautilus Wines in uh, a Marlborough-based uh, uh, winery of, of some note. Congratulations on being one of our top wineries f for uh, 2022. That's a great achievement. Yeah, thanks, Bob, and uh, yeah, good to see you again. And uh, yeah, we, we sort of always look forward with anticipation to see where we uh, where we land, end up on the on the rankings of the top wineries, and always look a few few steps above as to where we'd like to be, and a few steps below, and go well, I'm, you know, God, we're glad we're ahead of those ones. So it's it's always an interesting uh, time of the year. Yeah, it's great to be part of it. It's a it's a good good uh, concept. Yeah, I'd like to think that that it, that. Uh, the accolade inspires some wineries anyway to uh, to go on to bigger and better things. So uh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a bit of, bit, of, bit of healthy competition is always a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, it is indeed. Um, I was just on your website. You claim that blending small parcels of fruit builds complexity. Is that is that true for all varieties, or or more true for some? And um, no, I, I I think it's it's true across all varieties um, you know so the whole concept of blending is one plus one plus one equals four not three yeah. so you know the sum's greater than the individual parts so you know and that that certainly applies to our large Sauvignon Blanc blends where it's you know critical part of the process but even even with Pinot um, looking at different components we tend to ferment um, you know different size batches of Pinot Noir um, depending on the size of the block or something we're trialing, et cetera, and, but they can become very, very important um, blend components. And even with a single vineyard wine, you know, you may have more than one ferment or, or some of the wine might be fermented in uh, a different way or in barrels or something. So those, those sort of using those building blocks to, um, you know, to, to produce a, a better wine, a more balanced wine is really what the, the, the end goal is. Have you ever tried a, a do you, or do you use field blends? We we don't, to be honest. Um, we we certainly regarding Pinot Noir, you know, one of the topics of conversation with Pinot Noir is clone, and um, you know when the new clones come out, and you've got the new plantings. You obviously want to see what their effect is, and 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 we did that. We did a, a couple of. You know, individual cloning bottles are, are very early on in the piece. You may you may remember them. I think they were back down, you know, yeah. back as far as two thousand and one. Yeah. But um, we rapidly found that we preferred to co-ferment the the different clones um, and think it's you know it's kind of like the Shiraz Viognier concept. If you ferment the different components together, you can get a better result than separate and put, putting them apart. So from a clonal point of view, we've um, yeah, we've moved to that, so we almost deliberately had more than one clone in the ferment if we could do it. Nice. So that's probably as close as we've got in some ways to a, to a field blend, but we don't typically mix varieties. Um, do you do you have a do you have a favourite wine in your range, like a favourite wine from a winemaker's point of view in terms of making it, or or perhaps from a consumer's point of view in terms of drinking it? Is there one wine that stands out as your as your little your little pet? But that, that's like asking who your favourite child is. Well, I can easily answer that question. No. Um, yeah, look, they, yeah, they've all got to be favourites in some ways because you, you can't drop the ball on any wine, you know, whether it's, you know, so in some ways the most important batch of grapes coming in the winery is the next batch, you know, regardless of where it's going in terms of end use. Um, but certainly, look, we're very proud of our sparkling programme, um, which we've been sort of running for 30 years. Um, and that's sort of, you know, a very high reputational wine in terms of Nautilus, but probably the, the sort of the best kept secret, if you like, is our Chardonnay. Um, and our Chardonnay, we've been sourcing fruit off uh, our Ringwood vineyard for over 30 years now. So we've got a 30 year track record with, with one vineyard. Um, it's a bit like your favorite shuttle. It's had a, a few different heads and a few different handles where we've gone through a replanting process and new clones, et cetera. But, you know, and that's probably the staff favourite as well as our Chardonnay. It's the, it's the one wine we always have a bottle of in the fridge. Um, you know, in the case of, you know, what am I going to drink tonight? If in doubt, grab the Chardonnay.
<laughs> and then, of course, Pinot, but Pinot takes a disproportionate yeah. amount of time. Pinot is one variety you spend most of your time on. Yeah. I'm a card-carrying fan of your, uh, your Chardonnay, I have to admit. Uh, actually, I'd have to say, I'd have to say Chardonnay and uh, the, the fizz as well, the bubbly. Um, and then, and then, as soon as I said that, I think, well, gosh, you can't shut out the the, the Pinot Noir as well. But uh, uh, to me, the, the Chardonnay's got a got a. It, it's all about harmony, all about balance, and 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 uh, just a, a, a subtle a subtle wine with subtle power. And I think that's a. A hard thing to achieve in, in Chardonnay, and uh, and you do. Yeah, and, and, that, and that's probably something we aim for across all our range. You know, we're not necessarily trying to be a you know the biggest and boldest wine style. So we don't tend to you know perhaps produce a, a wine style that is showy, for want of a better word. Um, you know, restrained elegance, um, complexity is is what we're looking for. But you know, sometimes you just have to stop and think and look for it. It's there, but it doesn't always. You know, it's not always immediately obvious, but, you know, that sort of subtle elegance, I think, and, you know, restrained um, power, if you like, is, is something we, we aspire to with all our wine styles. Mm. Uh, the, uh, you have a separate, I was going to say processing plant, but I should say winery, a separate winery for Pinot, don't you? Which suggests a, a certainly a, a commitment to make serious, serious Pinot Noir, but... Yeah, absolutely. And look, we, um, you know, we first uh, encountered Pinot Noir in Marlborough through our sparkling program, uh, which was back in the early 90s. And then sort of in the late 90s, saw the potential for Pinot Noir, um, you know, as a red table wine. And, and at that stage, you know, realised that, that we were a, a shareholder in a contract winemaking facility at the time, which was fine for, for producing sort of fairly large volumes of Sauvignon Blanc, but we rapidly realised that if we're going to get serious about Pinot Noir, we need some, you know, specialised kit. So that was in 2000 when we we would um, built the, our, our Pinot Noir cellar. We, we'd we been saying that it was the first specialised Pinot Noir cellar, um, you know, solely dedicated to, to that grape in the Southern Hemisphere. Um, so we've been saying that for 22 years now and no one's contradicted us, so it must be true. But certainly, you know, other, other wineries in Marlborough and, and, and around New Zealand and, you know, have, have gone down that path as well since then, for sure. Mm. Well, th thanks very much for that. I, I'm going to have to, uh, to, to wrap it up now, but um, I'd just like to say once again, thank you very much for coming on and, uh, and congratulations on being in the top wineries list. And I look forward to, uh, to seeing uh, you or someone from Nautilus in uh, October at the... Uh, at the exhibition. So thank you, Clive. Cool. Thanks, Bob. Nice to chat, as always. Mm -hmm.